We're now going to look at our first layout panel, Stack Layout. Stack Layout is a great panel for prototyping or when you're first learning Xamarin Forms, since it offers reasonable default behaviors but also allows more advanced options for complex UIs. Stack Layout arranges its children in a single column, top to bottom, or a single row, left to right. The direction is based on its orientation property. This is similar to a stack panel in WPF or a linear layout in Android. Stack Layout is a container. As a container, its job is to determine the size and position of its child views. It has a list of children it inherits from its base class, Layout of T. In this case, the list stores views. Since lists are an ordered collection, the order of the list determines the layout order of the views. Additionally, layout panels themselves also inherit from view, which allows you to nest containers as needed. You can add or remove children from a stack layout using code. If your UI is static, you can add your views at startup. You can also dynamically add or remove views at runtime to change how the UI appears. To add or remove views from a layout container, you insert or remove them from the children collection using the standard iList add and remove methods. For children added in code, the layout order is determined by their order in the iList. In general, this will be the order you call the add method. You can also add children to a stack layout in XAML. The layout order of children is determined there by the order in which they're added to the children collection. For views added in XAML, this is the textual order. Stack Layout automatically adds a bit of room between each of its children. This is controlled by the spacing property. It defaults to six units, but you can set it to whatever looks good to you. Stack Layout lets you arrange children in either a column or a row. You control this by changing the orientation property. So far, we've only been showing a vertical stack layout. Changing it to horizontal only requires changing the orientation property. Vertical is the default, and it is optional whether you explicitly declare it that way for clarity. Now we need to discuss how stack layout deals with a view's layout options. Remember that a view can have settings for both horizontal options and vertical options. How these impact layout depends on the stack layout's orientation. Stack Layout uses a view's start, center, end, and fill layout options in the direction opposite its own orientation. A vertical stack layout uses horizontal options, and a horizontal stack layout uses vertical options. The option controls how the child view is placed within the rectangle the stack layout gives it. One of Stack Layout's main tasks is to figure out how big to make each of its children. For a vertical stack layout, each child gets a row to itself, spanning the full width of the stack layout. But how tall should each row be in a vertical stack layout? The four basic layout options of start, center, end, and fill don't really make much sense in this context. This idea leads to the approach. To determine row height, stack layout simply uses the height request value if there is one, or the default size if not, as we'll see in these label examples. The same logic applies to horizontal stack layout when calculating view width. Stack layout does not use plain start, center, end, and fill layout options in the direction of its orientation since at this point there won't be any extra room in that direction to make those options relevant. A view's expansion setting determines whether it would like the stack layout to allocate extra available space to its rectangle. Suppose you have a vertical stack layout. During the layout process, the stack layout will calculate the height of all its children. Sometimes the children will not fill up all the available space. Stack layout offers a feature called expansion that lets children request a share of this extra space. Each child can ask for expansion, that is, expansion is a property setting on the child views processed by the stack layout. The extra space is then divided evenly among all the children that asked for expansion. There's no way to divide this space differently, each expanded child gets an equal share. Keep in mind, the stack layout itself is not expanding here, it's the space allocated to those children. Additionally, stack layout expands children only in the direction of its orientation. Children already receive the full size of a stack layout in the opposite direction. So in this case, these options were not needed because a vertical stack layout expands in the vertical direction and a horizontal stack layout expands in the horizontal direction. Expansion only happens when the stack layout has extra space. First, the stack layout has to determine how much extra room is available using the standard layout calculation without considering expansion. For example, here we have a vertical stack layout. For each child, the stack layout will use the height request if there is one. And if there isn't a height request, the stack layout uses that default size, just big enough to fit the text in these labels. 
Once the stack layout knows the size of each child, it can add up the values to determine the total space needed. The difference between the stack layout's height and this total gives the amount of extra space. Remember that the layout option struct has two properties, an enum value for alignment and a boolean named expands. We've discussed the non-expanding versions, start, center, end, and fill, and these give a layout options with the expands flag set to false. Each of these four also has an and expand version that gives a layout options instance with the flag set to true. Notice you apply these in the same direction as a stack layout's orientation. For a vertical stack layout, you set the vertical options property, and for the horizontal stack layout, you set a horizontal options property. Previously, we said stack layout ignores start, center, end, and fill in the direction of its orientation. That's true for those plain layout options, but expands allows the stack layout to grow the size it allocates our view. With additional space for the view, stack layout does not ignore the and expand versions of these settings in the direction of its orientation. There's one more tricky aspect to expansion. Since the extra space is technically allocated to the layout rectangle of the expanded child and not to the child itself, the view may or may not change size as a result of expansion. It depends on which alignment property is used. If the child uses start and expand, it will not change size. Because it uses start, the child will simply be aligned to the start of the expanded rectangle. For a center and expand option, the child will be centered in the expanded rectangle. For end and expand, the child will be aligned at the end. Fill and expand is the only one of these four that changes the size of the child. In this case, the child will grow to fill the entire expanded rectangle.